hello, hello, what's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine, who? Monday. It's Monday, it's not Tuesday. Fine, Monday to y'all. Good to see ya, good to see ya, good to see ya. What is up, Stone Rain Productions? Glad you're recovering from the, the gallbladder surgery. Ty Potatoes, Christmas, Mancy, Mr. Stevel, a manicure, fussy, sniff power. How is everyone doing today? Oh boy, it is time for the best creature in Magic's history to make its return. We're gonna find out. The ultimate test of grief. There's been conversations about grief. How good is grief? Is it too good? Is it broken? The ultimate test is this. If grief is good enough to make Siege Rhino playable, then we can have a conversation about whether it's too good, whether it's good enough, whatever. So that's what we're going to find out today. We are Siege Rhinoing, even blinking Siege Rhinos, in Modern with grief and support and some ignoble hierarchs and some Gris and some random Planeswalkers. So I'm excited about this deck. I love me some Siege Rhinos. Finally brought my first Modern deck. Very excited for store play to return next fest. Ooh, what did you get, Killer Squad? Uh, hey, what's up, number two? Good to see ya, Alcos, Trevis, Dylan Hunter, Dragon's Bane, Michael plays FTG, Sniff Powder, good to see everyone today, oh, so hopefully everyone had a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have some fun, play some modder today, we got Gris too, we got all the all the fun things, backup deck today is uh, is some Monkey Ponza, we'll see if we get to it, if not, we'll do it in the in the future, and hello, welcome to the Fishbowl, thank you so much for your subscription, big super here, thank you, thank you, thank you, Yagmas Hospital is a good choice, that's a very powerful deck just practice it a bunch because it does take a, a little getting used to uh so yes backup deck ponza with gorilla shaman monkey ponza trinosphere action liquid metal coating main deck action the idea of this is i mean gorilla shaman is one mana blow up a zero mana artifact with the help of liquid metal coatings or maybe several liquid metal coatings we can be blowing up a lot of lands this could be a little a little monkey version of armageddon one-sided armageddon if we get it going so we'll see but we're starting with rhinos rhinos for we're we're in the we're in the jungle we're on safari today rhinos first and then possibly monkeys that is the plan we got a new donation our first donation of the day two dollar donation iris rager i have a fun story about siege rhino during cons pre-release people at my lgs thought the card would never see playing that it was bad i told them it was a busted card and then within weeks everyone was clamoring to get their hands on a playset of it well you nailed it on that one uh Irish Rager. It was like the best card in its uh, in its standard, at least one of them, in a very good standard. So, whoo, Thossie's decks don't work. Oh, wait, what? They don't? Thossie's decks are good. Gorilla Shaman has been good in Pauper. Glad we see it in Modern now. Yeah, I'm excited. There's still so much sweet new stuff to drive for Modern Horizon too. So, let's do our reminders. Talk about our decks. Start playing Magic. Then we can talk about our weekends. We can talk about Magic. We can talk about Wizards. Oh, wizards. Wizards cutting a ton of money out of uh, out of World's Prize Pool. We talk about secret layer drops we can talk about how we are officially one week away from spoiler season one week one week do you believe it do you but do you believe look at this look at this oh desktop ignore actually you can look because of the rats do you, do you believe like look at this schedule so we're on the 21st it is the 21st i feel like i missed a sub before i do this rack cryptic dreams and kigo shark welcome to the fishbowl thank you for your subscription big super for you oh yes there is on the youtube channel there's some historic hammer time action on on a budget 15 rares and mythic so check that out on the youtube this release schedule is so insane so we just got the release of modern horizons 2 like it just released in paper on the 11th we're on the 21st we start spoilers for D D set a week from i believe today and then the set release is on the 8th we're gonna have two sets within a month of each other releasing absolutely insane so the magic world it never stops it just keeps going yeah i mean i am excited for the D D set but boy it happens so fast these days Arnavad, welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big soup cheer for you maybe i should make the the bugler rat noise the new sub the new sub noise so when someone subs instead of doing the whole like like kdc 1994 first time sub maybe i do that instead of going through the whole like welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big soup cheer for you like sickest sickest <laughs> <laughs> that might get old after a while, but anyway, let uh, thank you. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, all right, 
So, reminders. Replay YouTube. This we invite all the old streams, including this one of the future. Normal YouTube. Historic Budget Magic. Coming up on Wednesday. We're going to Modern to Garth for Against the Odds. There's actually, we got a little historic break the last couple of videos, but there's a ton more Modern in Budget Magic and Against the Odds. It is coming. Tons of really sweet decks still. So, keep an eye out for that on the YouTube channel. A reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And if you need some magic cards, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com. They got Modern Horizons too. It's available now. You can get some goblins. You can get Norn's Annex if you ever need it. It's really bad, but who knows? Maybe you need it for some reason. Or a Mishra's Bobble to play Death Shadow. You can get them all at cardkingdom.com. Even get a free goldfish sticker. Let them know you want one. They will hook you up. Oh, we have new subs. New subs. Winter Melant with a gift sub to Dragon's uh, Dragonsbane87 and also Billy B. Williams, another first-time sub. <laughs> Welcome, you both, to the fishbowl. Thank you. Oh, and Winter Milan with another one to Terevix. <laughs> to you as well. Also, <laughs> uh, what did we miss? Replay YouTube, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Merch page. Clean out Richard's grads. Pick up some play mats or T-shirts. Whatever. Can support the stream and the channel and site donations. We already got one. They're always appreciated. They are never required. $2 or more. Get your message right on stream. The subs keep coming. Awesome, dude. 57 months. One of the original subs. Going back to the earliest days. Almost five years. Welcome back to the fishbowl. <laughs> and also Cloudy Music. Welcome you back as well. I'm excited for Paper Magic returning. And I don't even play a, uh, play that much Paper Magic. Number two Grinch Monkey Lover. With a gift sub for Winter Blah. And Bizzit out with another gift sub. Welcome y'all as well. Big, uh, big uh, bugle for our new subscribers. So anyway. Alright. Let's talk about our first deck of the day. We're starting with Sad Rock. Rhinos. And as I mentioned in the intro, the question we're answering is, is Grief with Ephemerate busted enough it can make Siege Rhino good? So this is a Grief Ephemerate deck. Of course, we got the cute little the cute little loop where we can, like, Grief exiling something, Ephemerate it, Thought Seize you a bunch of times. That's fun, but the real plan for closing out the game is Siege Rhino. The old standby Siege Rhino. Thank you for the cheer, by the way. Siege Rhino comes down. It drains our opponent. It lightning helixes their face. It leaves behind a big body. More subs are rolling in. Resbina and Bizina, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. It makes you cheer for you. So, uh, so yeah, that's the plan. We also have, of course, Stormforge Package, Sword of Fire Nice, Batter Skull, Calderon Complete. We have some sweet Planeswalkers. I don't think we played Grist yet, so we're Gristig. We are Kaya Usurper-ing. We are Liliana the Veiling. We got some Ignoblest of High Arcs to ramp into our Rhinos. We have some sweet tech in Crime Punishment. Crime Punishment. It can reanimate something from our opponent's graveyard. The more interesting aspect is Punishment is Green Black X. It says destroy each artifact, creature, or enchantment with mana value of X. This is tech to deal with Urza's Saga. Hey, what's up, buddy? How are you? Urza's Saga, this gets the golems, and it gets the saga itself, because it's an enchantment. It doesn't say non-land, so it's going to snag uh, It's gonna snag all parts of an Urza Saga. And that's basically the deck. Abzan, mid-range, value rhinos, sideboard, got a bunch of removal, got some hate cards, got some fractured for some reason, got a vindicate, got a choke for the blue decks, a little bit of life gain, gonna get boggles with back to nature, gonna rest a piece of graveyard deck, stony silence of fitted seed decks, maybe break the ice and Armageddon Tron out of the game, and that's the plan. That's the deck. Let's play some sand rhinos and see how it works. Kira Ashmore, welcome to the fishbowl. 51 months. Thank you for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your pronunciation of my screen name is always new. Res Kapunkunut. I think uh, I think I nailed it that time. I think I nailed it. <laughs> oh my my apologies for butchering for butchering your uh, your beautiful screen name. All right, let's do it. Let's rhino people. Let's rhino people. Oh, also chat. I don't know, and I know, I know, I know. Oh, why is it sad rhinos? They're sad because they're 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 grieving. They're <laughs> They're in a in a deck with grief. So obviously grief, rhino, sad, grief, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Our fairy, how are you? Hello, hello. Uh Chaos Powder. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The other the other thing I wanted to mention is um they're they're with grief, so they that's why they're sad. 
as your uh, Ashlyn Kirk. The other thing I wanted to say is, I don't know if you do the Amazon thing, and I know Amazon, like most uh, companies, they got their issues. If you don't do it, that's fine. But if you do do the Amazon thing, and you do Amazon Prime, they have some really, really good deals on old Commander decks. Uh, the best one, I believe, is $70 for all five Ikoria Commander decks. And Ikoria... Let me let me put the the deck list for Commander 2020. They have some really expensive cards. Like uh, this is the year that has the free spell cycle. So Deadly Rollick, fifteen fifteen dollars. That's that's not bad. That's not bad. Moving on to the next deck, we have what's the best card in this deck? I don't even know. Do they not have a good free? Oh, that's the Fog Spree spell one, isn't it? The big one though is forty dollar Fierce Guardianship. If you don't have your Fierce Guardianships, you can get them there. Uh, there is $33 Deflecting Swat also in that deck. I mean, just a single free counter spell in Deflecting Spot is $70. And you're getting another 498 cards, essentially for free. Flawless Maneuvers in there. The Commanders are playable. So, if you need Ikoria Commander stuff, Skull Clamp, Arcane Signets, definitely a pretty good deal uh, over on Amazon for the Amazon Prime Day. So, Gilabina, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh, chat, I don't think I told you this. Wow, this, uh, the green screen's looking a little wonky. Let's see if that fixes it. I think... I think maybe I found a house. Maybe. Uh, yes, we do have ephemerates. I've been on the house journey for a while. We talked about it before. The last one I didn't get, unfortunately, but I found another one. So maybe, maybe this is the one, fingers fingers crossed. The the negotiations or whatever go until till Friday. So we'll see. We'll see if we, we get outbid again. But hopefully, hopefully we get a house. And we can set up like a sweet recording uh, recording studio and do a sweet house tour but uh but yeah that would be i'm really excited about getting a house and not renting so i can set up like a a real studio for streaming and stuff i think it'd be super super fun so uh we like to play first i think we would we would like to grieve ephemera hissing oh dear oh no oh dear that's not the right abzan deck <laughs> Well, that's a waste of uh, that's a waste of ten ticks. <laughs> that's a that's a budget. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! That's a that's a potential budget magic deck <laughs> that I was working on a Abzan Reanimator deck that also has Siege Rhino in it. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a that's a bunch of play points we're never getting back. Yeah, we're punting before the the stream even started. <laughs> oh. Uh, we're not gonna play a we're not gonna play a whole league with a budget deck that's in testing. I don't think I bought a house this year. It's been crazy. Did you have to forego uh, the home inspection? No. Uh, do not have to uh, forego the house inspection, but it's the system's really weird because everything's moving so fast. So it's like you got a bid, and if your bid is accepted, there's like five days, is what the realtor said, to like get the inspection done and make any changes uh, as necessary after that. So, but it's one of those like delayed negotiation things. I don't know. I, I think it's a relatively new thing with selling of houses. Uh, but yeah, so it's like delayed negotiation. So everyone puts in their bids, and then I guess it ends on Friday. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it was it was a wrong deck. That was a that was a deck list punt. I hope everything. Uh, hope everything is all ready. Quick question: Would it be possible to add an upgrade path at the end of your budget magic videos? Ooh, lawn art. So. Uh, I don't put them in the videos. However, maybe I should put them in the videos. However, and I think I'm always amazed how few people uh, realize the connection between the YouTube and the website. On the website, uh, there's an article, and the article actually talks about an ultra-budget list making it even cheaper. It has a breakdown of a non-budget list making it more expensive. So maybe I should add it to the to the video too, because not everyone sees it. But for every budget magic, or almost every budget magic, Magic. There is also a an upgrade if you go to the, the actual article on the site. Yeah, it has been ridiculously hard to get a house, which is weird because, like, a couple years ago, 
I wasn't seriously looking for a house, but houses would sit around forever. Like I would see people trying to sell their house and their house would be for sale for a year without selling. Now everything happens so, 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 so quickly. So, so quickly. Wow, I, maybe, maybe I should, Lon Leafart. Yeah, I guess I forget because, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I forget. I need to do a better job of, I need to do a better job of promoting that because in the early days, the YouTube actually sprang out of the site. Like when we first started doing Goldfish, Richard started it before I got there and it was just prices. But when we started doing content, it was all written content and it was on the website. So I guess I forget that we have, oh, oh, the nut draw, but without white mana. We're on the play. One land, one keep. I mean, if we just peel a white source, we are off to the races. We just win. Type potatoes! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What do we what do we do? But yeah, now houses go ridiculously quickly. Hmm. Wait, the sale's over? Huh. Yeah, I guess we get a mulligan. I thought it would last I thought the sale would last all day, but maybe I maybe I'm misunderstanding. Well, okay. We will keep. This is not as exciting. We'll just put a random land to the bottom. I mean, this is fine. It's fine. It's not the wonderful, glorious, beautiful nut draw that we were hoping for, but we got we got a thought sees. We got a thought sees. Oh dear. Oh boy. What is happening over here? Oval Chase Daredevil, Stoneforge Mystic, Giver of Runes, Esper Sentinel, Bone Shards. Huh. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under control, you can... No sense in thought seizing that. I guess we just take Stoneforge? We can take Stoneforge and then try to just get to dam? I guess that's... I guess that's the plan. Try to dam him. Well, oh, pass the turn. I watched Shaman today... I watched Shaman today. You could use Imperial Recruiter to grab the important ones. Yeah, I wonder... That's something other people mentioned, too. I wonder if it's worth playing some non-Shaman in the deck. My concern is... Let me, let me look on Amazon. Do you have Amazon Prime? I think that's the question. May, oh my goodness, they topped like another Stone Forge. Oh, we're dead. We're super dead. We're dead. They topped like another Stone Forge. And they can protect it. We're super, we're super duper ultra dead. If they get Cauldra, they get Cauldra. Well, that's unfortunate. Sometimes they, sometimes they thought sees what you, aw. Aw, poor Siege Rhino. Oh, maybe, maybe they are all gone. Huh. So I see... Wait, Prime Day. I see the Strixhaven ones, which are still... The Strixhaven ones are a okay deal. $90, that's still a big savings for the Strixhaven Commander decks. But you're right, maybe they, maybe they sold out of the Ikoria ones. Because I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing the bundle of Ikoria ones anymore. Oh, it was there a few hours ago. I mean, Strixhaven is still okay, but not as good of a deal. Well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, this is just unfortunate. Do we even have a way to possibly be... So we're going to put Calder into play. Hit us for a billion. We are going to damn them, but their Caldra is indestructible. Yeah, that, that is exactly the top deck we needed not to have happen. Poda gets it, hits us for a lot, down to 13. Well, Verdant Catacombs. Crack Verdant Catacombs. Get a Swamp. I mean, maybe Ephemerating Siege Rhino could be a thing? I don't know if it's going to be fast enough. Well, damn your, damn your stone forges. <laughs> Yeah, we're Siege Rhinoing. Hopefully, we're trying. 
opponent top decks a land. We know they have bone shards. They draw underworld cookbook to start comboing. Well, I guess we can't complain too much because we also were trying to put Calder into play. What? Wow. That is a pretty insane string of draws for our opponent. Because we saw their hand. They did not have any of these cards. So their draws were Stoneforge into Asmore into Underworld Cookbook. Yeah. I mean, play Siege Rhino, it just dies. And then we die. We're not even going to show Siege Rhino. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> hi -ya 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 -ya. Okay. Destroy. Why are we playing Fracture? That does not beat a... Do we not have a... Ugh. Ugh. Do we just not have a card that can beat a Cauldra? Hmm. Maybe that's uh, not a great sideboarding decision. I feel like things that can answer... What is a Ben's answer to Cauldra? That would actually probably be a good article or video. Like, what can you put in your sideboard that is a clean answer to Cauldra? Uh, um, all right. Well, we'll bring the path, because that is kind of an answer to Cauldra. We'll go down a Thought Seize. Our opponent also can probably Grief Ephemera does. Not exciting. Well, all right. Try it like that. Try it like that. Yeah, Mass Vandal's not bad. Prismatic Ending. Yeah, Prismatic Ending could get rid of the token. That's true. Angras Rampage, you gotta get hit or miss. Kill Stoneforge. I mean, we thought seize the Stoneforge, and then our opponent drew another one, and they had to give her a root, so... We tried. That does work on occasion, but it is not as clean and easy as you'd think. Well, okay. Maybe it is our turn. The question's gonna be, I think we wait. I think we just Blooming Marsh past the turn. If our opponent Grief Ephemerates, oh boy, oh boy. Revoke Existence could be good. Kaya's Guile King, ooh, Anguish and Making I like, cause it's instant speed, opponent, untap land. Giver of Runes. Well, uh, okay. So now we get to Stoneforge. Do we also grief? Come on, Ephemerate. Come on, Ephemerate off the top. Let's combo them. Siege Rido. Hmm. I mean, we probably have to, right? D Spark is a good option. So we probably have to grief. I think we have to grief. Hey, what's up, Desolator? Good to see you, good to see ya. Yeah, D-Spark could be worth considering. PB! Welcome to the Fishball for the eighth month. Thank you for your subscription. Big super for you. Uh, but we'd have to pitch our Fatal Push? But if Stoneforge lives, we get to do to them what they did to us last game. Yeah, I think we have to. So, or maybe we pitch... Wow, are we gonna pitch Siege Rhino? That's pretty all-in. What if they have two... What if they have two answers? Mm. Yeah, I mean, having it in the hand is fine. Oh, Well, I guess that's some use of Siege Rhino. Yeah, that makes me sad, but... Well, grief you. Huh. Yeah, so our opponent has multiple answers. That's not great. Huh. You made it for Rhino time, Mr. Second Amendment. For Caldheim, what do you think is worth more, Blue White or Elves? I would guess Elves, but I actually have no idea... Ooh, Moto says it's offline. Well, it's online for us at the moment. Wow, 
wow, this is very tough. So if we take Thoughtseize, they Bone Shard Stoneforge, get to play Asmore. If we take Bone Shards, they Thoughtseize Cauldra. Maybe we don't play Stoneforge, as ridiculous as that sounds. Just take Thoughtseize and then kill their Stoneforge. Hmm. Yeah, this is... Yeah, we didn't have the Ephemerate. Well, past the turn. Yeah, we're not playing Stoneforge. Well, there has to be a creature for them to target, though. So it doesn't turn on Asmore unless there's a creature. One anonymous Spain. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big you for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Opponent plays Stoneforge. We could find another thought seize. Or something. Please get Cauldra and not something you can cast. Oh, and we discard it. I don't think it's something they can cast. And we discard our siege runner to do this. Hey, what's up, Ketheroy? I'm good. How are you? Opponent passing. Well, fatal push. Kill the stone forge. Untap. Treetop village. Go. <laughs> oh, good to see you, Spain. Much love to you as well. Opponent. So why don't everyone do this weekend? Anyone do anything cool magic-wise or otherwise? Opponent land. Thought seizes. Wow, they that's the second time they've top decked what we've what we've thought seized, which is awkward. Yeah. Alright, alright, alright. Opponent passing. We draw. Assassin's Trophy. Well, maybe it's maybe it's tree time, tree top village time. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. Get in, hit ya. So we know our opponent's hand. Opponent down to thirteen. Come on, tree top village. Played commander. Ooh, played some popper. How has popper been post modern horizons two? Opponent plays the sword. And hits us. We draw Path to Exile. Okay. Well, we will pass the turn. We could use that Siege Rhino now. If we can ever get through this bow charge, we can actually do the thing. Yeah, Storm is definitely a concern. Opponent, sort of feast and famine. Yeah, I think we just kill the sword. Opponent gets a land either way. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh. Oh, I forgot about the hidden mode on this. Yeah, we could have done it in response, and they wouldn't have got to draw a card. That's actually... Give me give me a punt for that. Well, yeah. I was thinking this would just pay the one, but there are, there are situations when it's more than the one, like this one. <laughs> Ooh, 26th birthday. Happy birthday, Lucid. Congratulations. About it. I'm telling you, magic cards, I just got way... Oh, my... Oh, my dear God. There goes Stoneforge. Pony passes. Well, Treetop Village. Go attacking. Hit ya. Jeez, um, all right, uh, grab a forest, play a marsh flats past the turn. Well, it is sad rhinos. 
opponent, Urza Saga. Huh. I feel like our opponent maybe has run better than us this match. Down to 16. Yeah, Urza Saga's pretty busted. Well, land. Tapped past the turn. Oh, I mean, we also we also punted. That did draw our opponent an extra card. Plain Brad, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Opponent goes to combat. How do we beat an Urza Saga? Is it possible to beat an Urza Saga? Down to 15. Well, we'll get a triome. Damn. Well, I guess that's going to have to wait. <clears throat> but they're going to be able to get the... Hmm. They're going to be able to get Underworld Cookbook and discard a card and make Asmore. We haven't played a... We haven't played a single... Uh, a single Urza Saga deck, have we? I don't think we've played anything with Urza Saga. Opponent. Oh, jeez, they drew that too. Oh my god! They drew the Daredevil. Alright, combo achieved. <laughs> Opponent. Sweet mother. Asmore gets a cookbook. Uh, Triumphs do rotate this fall. Plays the cookbook. Discards another Daredevil. Or the Daredevil. Goes to combat. Hits us for a few billion. We will take it for a few billion. Down to six. Bona passes. Well, one, two, three, four. Damn. Pay the one. Kill some stuff, sort of. Tap land. Yo. I... Oh, thank you for the cheer, uh, Poobles Maximus. I split a set booster of MH2 with a friend. I pulled Arid Mesa Foil Marsh... <laughs> it's like our opponents had a million profane tutors suspended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, voted. Gets and plays a nettle cyst, which is going to get big because they can keep discarding Oval Chase Daredevil. Opponent passes. We draw more lands. We play more lands. We pass the turn. Yeah, nettle cyst is sweet. Oh, boot it. Eh, I mean, I don't take offense to, uh, <laughs> to people not liking my voice. That's, everyone has their own taste, so. But a set box of MH2, but the sailor failed and sent me a collector booster box. And I'm like, well, I mean, I don't know if you have to send it back or whatever, but collector booster boxes are more valuable than, than non-collector booster boxes. About it. I think it was actually seller, but Bonet goes attacking. Well, we will path the nettle sister. I mean, I guess opponent's deck looks kind of cute. Maybe we're just not playing enough MH2 cards. Maybe that's the problem. We're playing, we're playing cons of Tarkir cards. We must have. I feel like every one of our opponent's draws has just been, like, an absolute 10 out of 10 bomb. But maybe they're just playing more 10 out of 10 bombs than we are. Drix! Welcome to the fishbowl for the second month. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
All right, eventually our opponent casts the Daredevil. And equips. Well, we will cast a Lockway and draw a card. It is a Stoneforge. A good magic card. Very late to the party, though. Verdon Cat, and we know there's still removal in hand. Yeah, all right. Well, that was a that was a blowout. Ha. Huh. Well, we did pun a little. Our opponent also did a really good job of drawing what we thought sees, which was annoying. I watched the box openings. Now I'm feeling so good about pulling far to five fetches, even though no Urza Saga or Ragavan. Some people got Garbo boxes. Yeah, what boxes were you uh, were you watching, Devin? I feel like you can definitely get garbage boxes. I mean, any box can be garbage. But I feel like a lot of draft booster boxes are not going to be great. I feel like the value of the set is in the good rares and mythics. And also in the in the the special versions, I think. Like when I opened my collector booster boxes, I got I ended up getting four of them, and I got three Force of Negations, which was was the big swing. Oh, let me see, let me see, Benny. Ooh, some Pyre of Hero Pirates, eh? That's spicy. You got some expensive iteration card draw. I guess that card is so strong you can just play it anywhere. That looks fun. I wonder when I wonder when pirates are gonna be printed in a good set. That's always the that's the problem with pirates. Is there one real set well, two real sets of support. Masks, ugh, horrible, horrible, horrible set, horrible block. And then Ixalan, modern day mask, just a absolutely horrible set. Uh so I wonder when pirates are going to be printed in a in a real powerful set and actually be good. Pirates in Innistrad? Yeah, but MH2, they're not really a... It's not like they're a supported tribe. Well, Commander Legends, sure, but Commander Legends isn't... Isn't legal and outside of Commander, mostly. So it doesn't really do anything to make, like, modern or historic pirates work. Oh yeah, Ixalan, what a what a dud of a of a set. That was just a it was very weak. I don't know, Wizards Wizards has a hard job because if you if they print sets that are too strong it breaks things, but if they print sets that are not strong enough, then everyone complains about them not being strong enough. <laughs> so they really gotta they gotta get right in the middle, I think. Ooh, fetching it, Urza Saga, nice. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. So Primeval Titan action. What do you think about what do you think about Urza Saga? Do you think Urza Saga is gonna end up too good for modern? Well, I mean, we'll get a Calder, that's all we can do. Pass the turn. Ikoria was pretty meh minus Shark Typhoon. I mean, remember Ikoria was before they nerfed command, uh, Companions was, like, the most broken set of all time. <laughs> I think it's easy to forget that because Companions feel like their own thing, but Companions were so broken. Insanely, insanely, insanely broken. It's too good. Fetches your best cards. Makes Contracts cost zero. Uh, I like... Ah. I wish it was narrower somehow. I don't know how to make it narrower. But I wish it was narrower somehow. I think that's my my biggest feedback for it. Like, if it was something that was powering up affinity, that's awesome. Hammer time, moving that up a tier, love it. Making Stoneblade decks and Amulet Titan decks better, and do not love it as much. <laughs> I don't, I wonder why they do, I wonder why they didn't make the companions a pay, play restriction, not a build restriction. You could achieve the same thing, but with way stronger safety valves. Uh, give me, give me an example of what you're thinking is a play restriction. Well, Caldra. Can I raise a, can I raise a Titan? Germia. 
Can't stop that, Grazer. Mm. Yeah, Treetop Village, go. Did they leave Legendary off Urza Saga because it wouldn't fit in the text box? I mean, we haven't had a Legendary... I mean, would Legendary actually do anything? I guess is actually the question. I'm not sure that being Legendary would matter, though, right? Because you sack it anyway. And we've never had a Legendary Saga. Legendary Sagas are just weird. I, I guess I could see it for flavor purposes. For flavor purposes, it makes sense. But... Since they sack themselves, it doesn't have that big of a gameplay impact. Opponent. Well, please no Primeval Titans. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. There's hope. So. Oh. These griefs have been rough. These griefs have required us to do a lot of discarding of cards that we don't want to discard. I really want to play Grist because Grist is sweet. But, well, first we're going to attack with the germ. Opponent takes it. Yeah, we got we to gotta do it. So, one, two, three. get rid of wait why is x currently two white do you see that saying x is currently two is that a it should be three right white green black Oh, X, okay. Okay, so we're good. Huh. Yeah, I guess I guess it's just talking about the mana cost, even though it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, so, get rid of that. Sadly, we've had to pitch a lot of good cards to Greaves. Two Titans. That's two Titans. Well, okay. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah. I don't think it's possible to beat a, uh, a Resolve Primeval Titan. Hmm, that's not ideal. I mean, I don't, th I don't know if I undervalue hardcasting it, but... We can't let Dryad live. Dryad Dryad is the second most important card in the deck. Like, Dryad Primeval Titan is is death and a half. So I feel like in that scenario we have to we have to do it that way. We don't really have a choice. There's a Valica. Well, come on, big draw. Well that that is a pretty big draw. Is it big enough? So damn. Kill the Primeval Titan. Vern Catacombs. Crack it. Come on, Treetop Village. Oh, if we can get him low enough, then we can Rhino for lethal. Combat. <laughs> Hit him. Oh. Oh, that's a that was a good damn. That was a good damn. Oh, I missed the companion idea. All right, to use uh, Nox's example with Loris. Imagine if the companion requirement was you may play this from your sideboard after you've cast fifteen or however many spells, mana value two or less. Oh, four. That's not quite siege rhino range. All right, pass the turn. That would still encourage people to make a deck that is primarily mana value two or less, while allowing you to break the rules and make combos to enable a companion. Obviously, it's tracking issues, but since you're probably playing your sideboard visibly, should be easy to track. That's kind of interesting. That reminds me of a very, a very Hearthstone-style mechanic. 
about it. Please die. Oh, they get another Primeval Titan? Okay. Teleri West. Transmutes. Summoner's Pack. Primeval Titan. Opponent. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting idea. I mean, 15 is probably not the exact right number, but I see what you're getting at. Ooh, something I was wondering about. This is something I've been wondering, because I told you every once in a while, when I did... Oh, no. Wait. Oh, opponent, does they've they've never read Caldra. They've never read Caldra. Our opponent has not read all the text on Caldra. Whoa. Okay. 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 The punts go both ways. An opponent tries to be sneaky and get the dryad. Well, they're they're still going for it. Maybe the problem was they didn't. Oh, okay. Maybe the problem was they didn't deal enough damage. Oh, Caldra. Caldra. <laughs> this one goes out to this one goes out to Tomer. <laughs> oh, if our opponent got the Primeval Titan there, they well maybe they would have still lost. If they get a Primeval Titan in and uh, actually get a Valakid ag uh, activation, so what do we have that can beat this deck? Uh, we need we need a card that makes all your opponent's lands colorless until end of turn or something to combo with. With break the ice. Velidor, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we'll keep we'll keep crime, I guess. It can get rid of It can get rid of uh amulets as well. Maybe we go down sort of fire knife. Probably not gonna be good enough. We'll just go batter skull cauldra. Alright. Try it like that. Oh, Rhino is really sweet. Yeah, maybe choke is worth it. Yeah, let's let's try a choke. It's only good if they have Dryad, but if they have Dryad, it could be really good. Please make some sort of vent with the Twitch points we keep earning from watching your streams. What would you... Yeah, that's something I've been talking about forever and still haven't figured out. What would you like to do with them? What would the event be? I channeled my inner Richard and built an amazing, amazing NES historic brawl deck. Lots of scoops when I switch control of my best creature with 1-1 one, one birds. Ooh, NES is a cool commander. Oh, okay. Okay. No rhino at the moment, but we do have a combo. A good one. All right, all right, all right. Well, opponent, your hand will be emptied. There's a saga. Opponent. Amulet. Well, we will. We're going to have to pitch the Liliana, but it's worth it. Vernon Catacombs. Crack Vernon Catacombs. Get a godless shrine. Untapped. Grief. Exile Liliana. See what you got going on. Alright. Well, we'll take Primeval Titan. We will Ephemera Grief. Get rid of the Abundant Harvest. So we cannot find Primeval Titan. We'll keep our Grief. We will pass the turn. Opponent does have Urza of Saga, but they are empty-handed. They're empty-handed. <laughs> oh, that would actually be... That would actually be hilarious. So many... So many points and... Oh, this is a combo. So many points and you can, uh... You can make me pronounce a card of your choosing. That would actually... That would actually be really funny. I like that. <laughs> Electric Light for the 15th month. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Big soup over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, do we even bother to... Ephemerate? Yeah, I guess we do. Just in case. Alright, it's all lands, which makes sense. 
Castle Stoneforge. Get us that Cauldra. Cauldra is pretty brus uh, busted. Pass the turn. Enough points to make you play Tronanum? That would be that would be a lot of points. That would have to be a lot of points. <laughs> that would be an expensive one. Is there any overlay that lets you read cards and deck lists on Moto like there is for Arena? Sadly, no. Oh, this might be a Rhino game. Sadly, there is not. That would be one of the things I think that would improve magic online content the most but currently that does not exist well get in and hit ya we can aff nah that's got menace that's got menace opponent <laughs> oh opponent takes the beats down at 12 Do we need to... Hmm... Yeah, let's pass. I'm wondering if we need to draw step Blink Grief, but probably not. Slivertron? Let, what would Slivertron be? Five color Tron is a definitely a funny idea. Opponent. I don't think they can do anything that good this turn. Like, even if they draw Primeval Titan, they can't cast it. I assume they're just making a construct? Alright, expedition map. Drekken! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pwn it. Passing. Well, let's get our triome. Untap. <laughs> hey, what's up, doggy sausages? Good to see ya. Another grief. Well, go to combat. Attack with the Cauldra. I guess the question's gonna be, can we beat Constructs? Opponent takes it. Stoneforge number two. Opponent's down to nine. Grab a batter skull. Pass the turn. Oh, Blinking Siege Rhino would be so good. That That's how we can win. That's how we can win. 100k for... We get to choose a card for against the odds poll. Ooh. That's actually a really awesome reward. So it wouldn't necessarily guarantee that it would be on against the odds, but you would be able to choose the cards that go in the poll and people could vote. I actually, I actually love that idea. That's a really, really good idea. Desi J, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Opponent. I'm going to make another construct. So these constructs are going to be big enough that we can't actually. attack with Cauldra anymore. Awkward. Very, very awkward. Alright, maybe maybe Radiant Fountain is is broken. <laughs> or uh Urza Saga, not Radiant Fountain. Who who has the most points? What's the highest points of anyone in chat right now? I mean we can attack, but we can't deal damage, right? Well I mean I guess they I guess we can attack and they lose a construct. I guess that's true. Yeah, Calder has that r more random text. There's always, always weird random text on Caldra. Okay. About it. Thinking. Passing. Hopefully dying. Opponent passes. Untap. 
We draw the land for our Siege Rhino potentially. Go to combat. Hey, what's up, Diva? Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? I made the terrible mistake of turning in my rented Ragavans and Urza sagas. Oh my, I did, I did the same thing. I had been trying to get Ragavans. I couldn't get the Ragavans. I finally got them and turned them back in, and now I don't know if I'll ever get them again. 50k, 94k, 119k. Ooh. All right, so, so 100k might be too much. 10k might be too little, because I feel like that would just let people... That would let people just uh, control the against odds pool for forever uh, or a very long time, which I don't know if I'd want that. But I do think that uh, that, that would be a good reward. Like 25K, 20K might be perfect, but that is a spectacular reward. I really like that. Pronounce a word. That could be a few K because I can, I can pronounce a lot of words. <laughs> What? Oh, what was, what was the show? Was it an old Simpsons episode? I think it was. I think it's a Simpsons episode. Oh, are we gonna ephemerate? I think we are. I think it was a Simpsons episode where, or no, maybe it was a Family Guy. It was a Family Guy episode where Chris. <laughs> becomes a missionary because he's running away from something and there's a guy that like the italian guy that'll pronounce pronounce any word funny for a nickel <laughs> uh, that'll that'll be me that'll be me i will pronounce any word funny for for a thousand channel points <laughs> <laughs> How many points to make you read a Yu-Gi-Oh card? Do, send me, send me a, send me a Yu-Gi-Oh card link in chat, and I will, I will read it. I'm actually kind of curious. Give me your best shot. Hey, Stu. <laughs> I, you're still, you're still in the bot. It still remembers that a playmat is owed. How's, how's the Stu life? So opponent, nothing in hand, transmutes. Oh, jeez. So this fizzle. Mm. So I still get the Titan. No matter what we do, there's always a Titan. And now there's also huge Karnstrugs. The moon it. Gets a Titan, plays a Titan with two amulets, which is pretty insane. Opponent. Yeah, Urza Saga is the card of this league so far. I mean, now that it's a card name, I think I'm allowed to. I think I'm allowed to say it. Oh my goodness, this card. Okay, hang on. Let's let's see if we die here. So opponent, Hasty Titan. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, opponent. I got it. We got it. You got all the mana in the world. Two amulets. See, this is where I don't like Urza Saga. This is this is what makes me think that that it could be a card that ends up getting banned. Like, ooh, the raid is on. Hey, what's up, Jim? Welcome. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, raiders. We are we are getting uh, Urza Saga here against against Primeval Titan, opponent. Goes to combat. Attacks with Primeval Titan. So this is going to be, what, 20 power double striker? I assume. That's a lot of chumping. About it. Yeah, this is where I really dislike Urza Saga. There's a, there's a MH2 sale? What's the what's the MH2 sale? I did not see that. I don't think that being legendary would matter. Like it sacks itself. 
I, I'm still, I'm not saying it needs to be banned, none of, none of that stuff. I, I'm actually, I'm actually pretty happy with where Modern is at the moment, but Urza Saga might go in too many decks. Yeah, people pretty quickly figured out that making two tokens is pretty insane. Why not keep Urza Saga around as it has brought back a bunch of what used to be dead decks and finally ban prime time. Well, I'm not calling for I'm not calling for anything to get banned. That's not that's not what I'm saying. Uh just so that's clear. That could I like that it's like brought back affinity to some extent in hammer time. That is that is a part of the card I really like. I mean, I guess we're taking, I guess we're taking 10. There's no way we can, I don't think there's any way we can kill our opponent here, though. Maybe we can draw removal? Well, Stoneforge. Batter Skull. Crack this. Get a Overgrow Tube. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. <clears throat> Not fully confident. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We get an ephemerate that I don't think we even want to cast. Well, no point in casting it. We draw more lands. And die? Hmm. <clears throat> The problem is we know another one is coming. Like, they just keep coming. They get another... They're going to be able to get another... Another Siege Rhino. Or another... We have the Siege Rhino. They're going to be able to get another Primeval Titan. Well, hit you for nine, sorta. Opponent blocks. And blocks. Wait, do we just win? No, it has to deal combat damage. All right. Oh, block, block. Kill the constructs. Hit you for one. Gain back a bit of life. And probably get Primeval Titan. We have a new donation from... Ooh, opponent does have to pay. That helps a tiny, a tiny, tiny bit. Please read this $3 donation from Elkaza, uh, Elkaz. Please read this card from start to finish, Seth. All right, let, I got it pulled up. Wait, oh my goodness. All oh, these Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Let, let me, let's finish this game. And then I, and then I will read the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yu-Gi-Oh cards make magic cards look simple. So, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh cards have a ridiculous amount of words on them. The Rhinos are literally getting sad at the moment as we're losing to Primeval Titans. <laughs> uh, about it. Pays the Piper. I mean, Batter Skull plus Culture is good, but I feel like they can just tutor up Artifact Destruction, kill the Batter Skull? Or they can tutor up... Well, no, we're dead, right? They tutor up... Dryad of the Ilsen Grove. Yeah. They tutor up Dryad of the Ilsen Grove. They play Dryad of the Ilsen Grove. They attack with Primeval Titan. Primeval Titan's busted. It shoots out all of our stuff. We get Valakuted. They get Double Strike or something. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're dead. Couldn't you have blocked Titan with 4-4 four, four token last turn? Uh, well, yeah, we could have, although at the time we didn't know that, we didn't know that we were going to be able to equip it, because we didn't have a land to equip it. Bonnet Breeding Pool. Okay, so I just get another Primeval Titan. Ha. Huh. Interesting, interesting decision. Opponent. Untaps and taps. Taps and taps. Plays a Primeval Titan. Does Primeval Titan-y things. 
Primeval Titan's insane. Could you imagine how... Could you imagine how insane it would be in Commander? Opponent. Double Amulet. Mana, very large. Taps and untaps, taps and untaps. I opened a, uh, a foil, Missy Reinforced, in my MH2 box. I was wanting to find out it is basically the same price as a regular copy. Any chance that those go up or are normal foil fetches considered passe? So, all the special versions, along with foil's dubious card quality, has really has really minimized the value of normal foils. I would be surprised if... Oh my god. I would be surprised if the Modern Horizons 2 foils actually... No, they're Teleri West. If the Modern Horizons 2 foils actually... actually went up significantly in value. I think that the special vor uh the special border ones, like the old border and so forth, I think those can go up in value, but Yes, it's been this has been brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. I'm a green player and I completely agree that it had to be banned in EDH. Yeah. Good God. Every Every summoner's packed in the hand. We got a new donation from Murph a Gator. $5 donation. Hey, Seth. Got back into paper magic after 10 year hiatus. Thanks to your content. Oh, that's awesome. Haven't won a roll. Uh, haven't won a roll to go first in three weeks. <laughs> Going to kill the batter skull. Okay. Haven't won a roll to go first in three weeks, but did get a turn to Blood Moon win thanks to a path. Ooh, that is <laughs> disappointing about the die rolls, but nothing like a turn to Blood Moon. Turn to Blood Moon is about the best. I don't know what our opponent's doing. Maybe our opponent's just, like, learning this deck or something. I'm very, very confused. Opponent passes. So confused. Couldn't our opponent have killed us like 10 different ways? Uh, thank you again for the donation. Ooh, Affinity. Legacy Affinity could be a fun one to play. We haven't played much Legacy since. We haven't played much Legacy since, uh... Modern Horizons 2 came out. Wait, how could we have our opponent... How could we have our opponent at 2? So if we attack, our opponent blocks here. They do have to pay a lot of mana, but they have a ridiculous amount of mana. Oh, if only we had that ephemera. Ephemera would be so nice. Well, if we attack with everything, we'd lose, right? <laughs> uh, next Modern Budget Magic is next week. We had a brief... A brief historic break, but... Everything the rest of the week is more modern. I mean, if we attack with everything, our opponent, our opponent can block here if they want to. Eat this, eat this. They can block here. They take three to five. Double block here. Block here, double block here opponent blocks with primeval titan that's probably what they if they block with primeval titan 
I mean, maybe that's our only shot to win. They block here with Primeval Titan. They double block here. They take two. Their Primeval Titan lives. And then I think we lose. If they don't block the germ with a Titan and they block here, they take three. They block here, they block here, they lose. They double block here, three, four, five, they lose. It depends on how our opponent blocks. It depends on if they try to keep all their Primeval Titans alive. If they throw away a Primeval Titan blocking the Cauldra germ, then they win. If they Foundation Breaker block or leave it unblocked and eat other stuff, then we would win. Yeah, they have two packs of bait, but they have two amulets, so they have enough mana that they can still easily easily play stuff that beats us. Wow, it's such a weird situation. If we grief a siege rhino, they know what's up. Alright, I guess we'll just swing. Math is for blockers, as they say. I mean our opponents played this interestingly, so maybe they don't block in the in the perfect way. I don't know if they've seen Siege Rhino this entire match. So I might not be worrying about being at three life. Seize Rhino, oh, come on, do it, do it. You know you wanna put that foundation breaker in front of that germ. Oh. Yeah, well, opponent sniffed it out and will be rewarded with a victory, I believe. Yeah, so opponent takes two. Grief. Take a peek. Yeah, opponent. Opponent new. Opponent new. All right. Well, so there goes grief. We'll see. They do have to pay for packs. We'll play a Siege Rhino, put you to three. All right, opponent, let's see it. Let's see it. Opponent pays the packs, lands in hand, but Primeval Titan also in hand, and Primeval Titan tutors up any creature in their deck thanks to Delario S and double amulets. So even though their hand is empty, it's not as empty as it looks. There's no way we don't die here. Yeah, that seems... I mean, we're not necessarily dead. How do we automatically die without our opponent having anything in hand? So I don't think that... I mean, it's likely that we die here, but... I don't think it's guaranteed with our opponent having all lands in hand. So opponent pays the packs... Why didn't Germ trample? Uh, I mean, Germ's only five. Germ's only five power and Titan six power, so there's... The Titan soaks up all the damage. The... The Cauldra ability about... Exiling a creature... That applies after the damage is dealt. So that basically... That's why Cauldra killed a Primeval Titan, is because of that ability. But the damage has already been dealt by the time that that happens. So it's not, like, unblockable, essentially. Cauldra doesn't... It's not, like, weirdly worded unblockable. It's... If you block this with a, a big creature that would normally survive, you're still gonna lose it. 
So it makes it hard to block, but it doesn't really force through extra damage. Oh yeah, the Batter Skull. The Batter Skull has been brutally, brutally, brutally murdered by a Foundation Breaker. Huh, okay. Well, I have no idea what's going on with that match, but our opponent, who I don't believe is actually dead here, block, well, I guess they are to the Rhino. Well, I guess it's a Rhino win. Okay, it's a win. That was a weird, very, very weird match all around. But the Titans down, we're counting that as a Rhino win. And now, I have to read this Yu-Gi-Oh card before our next match. Oh, goodness. Oh, no. Endymon, Endymoin, the mighty master of magic. So it, uh, it's dark. It's got a couple eight diamonds, eight blue diamonds, eight red diamonds. You can remove six spell counters from your field. Spectral summon this card from the pent pendulum zone. And wait, you can remove six spell counters from your field. Special summonings, special summon this card from the pendulum zone then count the number of cards you control that have a spell counter destroy up to that many cards on the field and if you do place spell counters on this card equal to the number of cards destroyed you can only use the effect of endemoin the mighty master of magic once per turn spellcaster pendulum effect with a bunch of slashes once per once per turn when a spell slash trap card or effect is activated quick effect you can return a card you control the spell counter to your hand if you do negative oh negate the activation and if you do that destroy it then you can place the same number of spell counters on this card that return the card to your hand why this card has a spell counter your opponent cannot target it with card effects card effects you can, it can also not be destroyed by your opponent's card effects then this card with the spell counter is destroyed by battle you can add one normal normal spell to your from your deck to your hand attack 18 uh 2800 defense 1700 first edition i have no idea what i just read none absolutely absolutely no idea so is that card good is that actually like a good Yu-Gi-Oh card the other one someone said was Venom, Venom Young, Venom Inaga, the deity of poison snakes, reptile effect, and then a bunch of really small print that I don't actually think I can even see. They need better card quality images. Venomonga, the deity of poison snakes. So ma magic names are are probably easier than <laughs> than Yu-Gi-Oh names. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand Yu-Gi-Oh, honestly. I really don't understand. I don't understand how it works. Because there's no mana, right? There's no... I don't understand how it works because there's no mana. So you just get to cast everything whenever you want. We have a new donation from... Pub uh, Publius Maximus. $3 donation. Hey, Seth. Long time watcher. First time participant. I'm so excited for MH2. That MH2 allows Orzhov decks to be good and modern. For the first time ever, I am concerned about the current state of Boomer Jund. Also, do you think that Boomer Jund is possible in historic? Ooh. So, thank you so much for the donation. I mean... I think you could play a Jun deck in Historic, although how much it feels like Boomer Modern Jun, a lot of the cards are a lot of the cards are missing that you would probably want. There's no another bobble. There's no Tarmogoyfs, there's no Dark Confidants, there's no Lilianas. So you could definitely build Jun mid-range, but I don't know if it would actually feel like the modern the modern version all that much. That would be that would be the question. How much does it actually feel like the modern version? Well, pass the turn. Maybe we'll get just get to seven mana and cast a cauldron. I assume our opponent's playing control of some kind. 
breeding pool. Oh, maybe it could be lantern, I guess. All right. Oh, they're playing Saltai. Saltai Mishra's Bobble Tribal. Passes the turn. Cracks on our upkeep. Well, Verdant Catacombs. Yeah. Handed up being pretty slow now that we got our Stoneforge Thossies and our Dork killed. But what does Pot of Greed do? I have no idea. You gotta play Triome on that turn. I mean, we're cycling the Triome, I think. We have lands for days, so I think we're better off cycling it and trying to hit something that does does more. Opponent gets a Lurus. Well, now we're definitely going to have to try to grief. Get a Swamp. Cycle the Triome. Oh, Prismatic Ending's good. Marsh Flats. Crack it. Get our Plains. And grief you. Get rid of Lurus. Hardcast. Hey, thank you for the cheer. Uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, you can basically play as soon as you get the cards, which is why draw spells are almost always banned and why a lot of cards that see play have downsides. Ooh. I didn't realize that. Okay, opponent. Many drown in the locks and a big Tarmogoyf. Huh. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. So can we deal with a goyf is the question through a million drown in the locks. Well, we will play play a sea shrino. Get it countered. Yeah, drown in lock number one. Overground Tomb tapped. Hit you for three. Wow, this is good, clean, fair, old school magic. <laughs> it is Tarmogoy fighting its hardest in 2021. Sad News Bears. Oh. Oh, they top deck lethal. Oh, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that does it. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, we didn't need to jump, but... Yeah, that that is that is game and a half. Yeah. Oh. Rogues, eh? So, Salt I control with rogues. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, so opponents <clears throat> playing rogues with Tarmogoyf, apparently. I mean, I guess that means we bring in Rest in Peace? Rest in Peace does seem like it shuts down a lot of what our opponent's trying to do. They didn't seem to be playing many actual islands, which is awkward. Kaya. I guess it does hate on the graveyard. Crime Punishment seems bad. Crime Punishment hasn't done anything. I guess we didn't draw it in the matchups where we would have really wanted to. Maybe go down Assassin's Trophy. Hmm. <laughs> Vice Pick Gaming! First time sub! <laughs> Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it is what it is. Yeah, let's go down, let's go down Kaya for a path. Yeah, try it like that. Yeah, companions, companions are a pretty, a pretty big mistake, I would say. I mean, they were perhaps the biggest mistake in Magic's history when they were first printed. And then they're just always there. That's what I that's what I really dislike. Uh why are the rhinos sad? Uh they're they're with grief. They're uh they're grieving. I I'll have to look. I wonder 
I wonder what percentage of decks I haven't really calculated it recently are playing Luris. I'm sure the number is is pretty high. But the thing that I dislike the most about companions is they're they're just always there every single time staring at you. There's no like if you play against uh Callblade. You play against Callblade. Okay. If you play against Callblade, some percentage of the time, your opponent's just not going to draw their... They're just not going to draw their Jace. But when you play against a Lurus deck or a Yarian deck, your opponent draws it 100% of the time. Like, it is there from the start. Opponent, going to thought sees the Batter Skull. Abzan Tunings 2. Eternal Witness looks sweet. Some solitudes. I really like Vindicate. Vindicate makes makes sense in the in the main deck. Oh jeez. All right. Well. Uh, Calder off the top. Or a forest. Um. Marsh flats. Pass the turn. Ugh. Eberil Blazer! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you. Boy, opponent is very good at bobbling. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So they've drawn another Thieves Guild Enforcer? Two more? Huh. Welcome to the Vidge Bowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Zoom for you. Happy 11th month anniversary, Magic Dad. What did you get me? Awesome. Some sad, some sad rhinos. <laughs> Any chance we see an unmarked grave Storm Herald deck? I mean, our opponent wouldn't... They gotta have it. There's no way. I mean, we'll block. We don't have an equipment anyway, but... I don't think this is a bluff. I think our opponent clearly has Double Thieves Guild Enforcer. Thieves going for all right. They only need one, yeah, because it triggers both of them. So yeah, well, as predicted, we lose our stone forge. We crack a marsh flats. We get a temple garden. Siege Rhino doesn't seem very good against double thieves guild enforcer. Untap. Opponent cracks. Oh, play a forest. Play a very sad rhino. <laughs> oh, hit you to third, dude. Pass the turn. What are your thoughts on dino slash gruel storm in modern? I've only messed around with it a little bit, but I haven't... Uh, soaring Thought Thief. I've only messed around with it a little bit, but I haven't really found a... I haven't found or seen a build that was functional. So I think it's a cool idea, and I would like it to be good, but I have not, I just haven't, I haven't been able to figure out a way to make it happen. Pona hits us for a few million. Breeding pool tapped. Passes. We draw more lands. Well, go to combat. Uh, attack ya. Opponent takes it. Kill a Thieves Guild Enforcer. Yadla Shrine tapped. Pass the turn. Uh, to your knowledge, has Wizards ever announced the winners of any information from the Mr. Beast event? Uh, to my knowledge, no. And also to my knowledge, you can't trust Wizards with matters of money. <laughs> I mean, we got a pretty clear example of that with... With wizards uh, promising to give people a certain amount of money for playing in worlds, and then, and then after people qualified for worlds, taking it away. So, I don't think that's really any different than promising people money for 
playing against Mr. Beast and then just never talking about it again. It seems like it's kind of part of the course for Wizards. Border, borderline almost, I, I don't want to, oh, jeez. A scam? A scam. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a scam. Whirly boy, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup to your you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, that was that was rough. Well, so far, the answer seems to be no. The answer seems to be that grief is not enough to... Not enough to make Siege Rhino good. Our losses have not been even a little bit close. And his deck has felt... A lot worse than the other deck we played with Grief and Ephemerate. So yeah, I I have no idea. Hopefully Wizards actually does pay out people for for the Mr. Beast thing. Uh but yeah, I haven't heard anything about it. <laughs> you got it. <clears throat> ephemerate the siege rhinos. Yeah. Got to get them on the battlefield first and then draw an ephemerate, which seems to be challenging. <laughs> Favorite MH2 deck so far? There's been a lot of sweet ones. Um, Enchantress was really fun. I really... I've always liked Enchantress. And thanks to Modern Horizons 2, Enchantress is actually kind of sweet and modern now. So that would be that would be one that would be on the list. Uh, the Academy Manufacturer deck is uh, that we played in Against Odds was really, really sweet. Um, Ephemera Grease... It's pretty sweet. I like some of the new, like, Hollow and Asmore decks. Uh, I'd probably go with either Academy Manufacturer deck, the token, token-y combo deck, or, uh, or Enchantress, though. But there's, there's a ton of sweet decks. How is, how is Historic Brawl with 100 cards? Has that made it better? I don't really play much Brawl, but I'm curious. All right, let's get a, let's get a Rhino Nut Draw. We gotta have a good, we gotta have at least one good good rhino draw in this league well no rhinos no griefs so at least the rhino's not sad but yeah the token combo deck's so sweet i've been playing some simic ponza Ooh. Uh, all right swamp and thought sees you Well, take the helix. Hope the Stoneforge sticks and lives. Awful for me, but that's me not having time to brew. Do you have a video on the historic brawl event? I do not. I'm I don't play a ton of brawl. Every once in a while we do a little brawling, but I don't we don't play brawl too much. Well Vernon Catacombs, crack Vernon Catacombs. Get a Godless Shrine untapped. Stone Forge. Batter Skull. Go. Please don't draw an answer. I've been playing some Teamer Delver since MH2. Dragon's Rage Chandler feels super strong. Yeah, Dragon's Rage Chandler is really good. It is it is a very strong card. Sacred Foundry. Ooh, opponent does not have the answer. Passes. Well, uh, Cauldra? Cauldra Surprise? Land Ignoble High Arc? Sixia? I mean, Cauldra off of Stoneforge isn't... I wonder... Uh, what do you think of that play pattern? I think that's actually... And again, when we talk about this stuff... It's not calls for bannings, not by any stretch, even a little bit. So don't interpret it that way. What do you think of the the Caldera Stoneforge synergy? I think it's actually kind of an interesting question. What do you think of the Caldera Stoneforge synergy, where it's kind of like if your Stoneforge lives, you get a free win, but if your Stoneforge dies, you do nothing. Very swingy. Well, go attacking. Down to eight. 
Verdant Catacombs. I mean, I guess we play Kaya. Play Kaya. Exile the Helix. Crack this. Temple Garden untapped. All right, pass the turn. Go, go, equipment. McCary. Hey, McCary, how are you? 41st month. Besides all of Eldorain. What card are you most excited for to rotate? Ooh. So, uh, clean answer here. Uh, Emergent Ultimatum, for sure, by far. Also, Rogues, I guess. <laughs> I, I'm ready for all of Standard to rotate. Thank you. Welcome back to the Fishbowl, by the way. Thank you for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Cardboard Live is a not, does not function, period, on Magic Online, unfortunately. I would love to have that tool. That would be, wow, boy, people punt like crazy into uh, into Cauldra. People still have not really figured out the indestructible aspect, apparently. Or maybe they just want the token. <laughs> nope, that doesn't work. <laughs> that definitely does not work. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't wait for Rogues to go either. Rogues is super obnoxious. Opponent. I mean, I feel like we're in pretty good shape. Opponent's going to pass. We're going to put Batter's Call into play. All we need is a Siege Rhino. That's the only thing that can make it better. Uh, tap, tap. Batter's Call. And opponent. Done, done, done. General Ferris is a sweet card. Experience the Cauldra difference last Friday in Legacy. Pony had Stoneforge Cauldra. I had uh, Sorcerer Spyglass them. Then I Karn my own Cauldra from the sideboard. Hard it for the win. Ooh. What deck, uh, what deck were you playing? Some sort of, like, Cloud Post deck? All right. Pony's Multicolor Shenanigans. Break the Ice has not been relevant once. Not a single time. Uh, Multicolor Shenanigans. Vindicate can kill General Rockerick, which seems relevant. Crime Punishment getting rid of all the golems seems relevant. Um, Maybe go down what? Prismatic Ending? Yeah, let's go down one Prismatic Ending. Yeah, try it like that. Do you have any suggestions for upgrades to the modern affinity deck you played aside from Urza's Saga? Um, I think the sideboard could probably be improved a bit. I think that there have been some... Ooh. Hmm. Well, we got the Rhino. We're going to keep. There have been some... Some finishes with with affinity style decks over the past week or so. So you can probably get a pretty good idea if you go to mtgoldfish.com, look for a look for affinity, but most of them are like s relatively similar. Shadow Sphere is an upgrade if you have Urza Saga. The sideboard could definitely use some reworking. The unfair matchups can be a problem, but there's everything from from mono blue to like four or five color affinity decks. So most of the shell, like the creature base, is very budget friendly and doesn't really change much. But there are some like tweaks around the sideboard, uh, and Urza Saga is, is definitely the the biggest one. But I don't think there's really a a ton of upgrades, even in non-budget form, outside of the sideboard. All right, opponent passes. Well, we will blooming marsh. No, uh, opponent. Spire of Industry and Glimmer Void are good lands to add to non-budget. The heart the question is how many artifact lands can you play? That's kind of the 
that's kind of the the balancing act. You want as many artifact lands as possible, but then you also wouldn't mind having five colored lands and more untapped lands. But the artifact lands powered affinity stuff, but you don't want all artifacts because then you lose this Tony silence. So I think those are good lands to add, but I wouldn't cut all of them because the artifact lands are important to the deck working too. So it's a it's a balancing act. Do you think it's worth making squirrel twin like this? Ooh, speaking of squirrel. Ugh. Hmm. That's actually kind of a blowout. I guess we should have... I was not expecting Suppression Field. Interesting. Huh. That is very good here. That's going to slow us down a whole turn. Well, don't got to try and go. Yikes! Is our opponent a Ponza? What is our opponent's deck doing? Yeah, that... I mean, that looks like a sweet Squirrel Twin. I don't know if Force of Vigor is necessary in the main deck, but... That looks... That looks solid to me. Squirrel Twin is also... Oh, jeez. Um, ay, 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 ay. Well, we need to draw non-fetch lands, please. <laughs> well, I guess that kind of counts until it dies. Oh, opponent's playing some sort of... Uh, <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about the multicolor suppression field plan, but whatever works, opponent has a rip apart. And, all right, Treetop Village, that is a non-fetch land. Pass the turn. Opponent. Plays a tap land. Well, now we're to the point where we get to do things, which is nice. I'm very confused what our opponent's deck's trying to do. <laughs> Okay. Chalice of the Void, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, well, we will... Hmm. Play Kaya. Actually, do we vindicate them? What are we doing here? What is our... I have no idea what our opponent's doing. Literally none. All right, I think let's grief. Let's grief pitching fatal push. Kaya doesn't really do anything anyway because of suppression fields. <laughs> uh, okay. Opponent has a handful of magic cards. Um, I will take Blood Moon. We will vindicate a land. Or do we vindicate Suppression Field? Hey, what's up, Doug? Welcome back. Is it worth killing Suppression Field, or do we kill a land instead? Killing Suppression Field lets us turn on a fetch land. Killing a land means we're not going to get Hactos? How bad is Hactos? It is a very fast clock. Do the Rhinos even beat the Hactos, though? Yeah, I think we gotta hit a land. Play the Marsh Flats, even though we can't crack it. Pass the turn. I don't even know how our opponent plays Hactos when they play a Blood Moon. Land, please? Well, not a land, but... Castable Magic, the Gathering card. 
Stoneforge. Get a batter skull. Come on, untap land. Come on. This is interesting. Opponent lightning helix. We knew about that. Well, the rest of our opponent's hand's pretty janky looking. Opponent. Third suppression field. Land place. Ephemerate. We're like a land away from doing all kinds of sweet things, but not there yet. About it. Passes. Please not a fetch. Alright, so that's a fetch land. Well, we'll play the Kaya. Go. About it. Yeah, it is a strange, a strange sort of prison deck by the looks. Non-fetch land? Okay. Well, that is a non-fetch land for next turn. It means Siege Rhino can finally start coming down. Does our opponent get land for Hactos? They do not yet. Ooh, Castle Lock Wayne. That's another non-fetch land. Well, one, two, three. It's Rhino time. It's Rhino time. Rhino time to punish, hopefully, this prison deck. Rhino. Drain you. Down to 18. It's on the battlefield. Pass the turn. Opponent attacks. Trying to get up to s <laughs> a bunch of green mana for Chancellor of the Tango. <laughs> oh, all right. We will go to combat. We will rhino you. If we get one more land, we can actually start cracking these fetches too. Opponent takes their beats. Well, what's better than a rhino? <laughs> a crash of rhinos, rhino number two. Drain you, and I think it might be over. I think it might be over. Opponents at 11. I don't think Hactos is even enough. Boy, those suppression fields really slowed us down. Ooh, Season Pyromancer is a good draw for our opponent. That's a good draw. That's a good draw. Discard some guards. Draw... Wow. <laughs> Chancellor of the Tangles! Uh, said this at Lysias, but whose deck this is? Oh, you said... You think it's a, a Magic Aids deck? Yeah, that's a... It is a, It is interesting, that's for sure. <laughs> a... A different take on Prison. Not sure about these Chancellor of the Tangles. They're a a pretty a pretty lacking replacement for Simeon Spirit Guide. Not a not a fan. <laughs> um Simeon Spirit Guide was so sweet. <laughs> about it. Brutally dying. Down to five. Well, pass the turn. Blink some rhinos. I think our opponent's probably dead. About it. Untaps. Draws. Show us that Hactos. Show us that Hactos. About it. I never know when someone says it's a Magic Aids deck because... It seems like... Uh, it seems like anything could be considered a Magic Aids deck. <laughs> I, I sometimes feel like if you play any card that is... That is a... Yeah, I think uh, a few people may have mentioned that. Yeah, we're not going to ephemerate yet. Untap. Boy, it'd be nice to crack these fetch lands. These suppression fields were very, very effective at slowing us down. Doesn't look like they're going to slow us down long enough, though. Go attacking. Oh, I guess we can't ephemerate anyway, can we? Because of Chalice. <laughs> All right, opponent. What's your plan? What's your plan for the Rhinos? 
about it. Vlogs. Vlogs. And. And. Well, it's cool to see, uh, see a take on prison. Lightning Helix. Okay. Down to two. So, we will, oh, we only have one white mana still. So awkward. Well, we will, one, two, three, four, five. Batter Skull. Yeah, these suppression fields have been pretty, pretty great for our opponent. Pass the turn. Opponent. Wait, what is a what is a pun, sound man? Yeah, it's it'd be sweet if uh, a blood moon deck was good. Kind of reminds me of a reminds me of the land destruction deck, but with with more of a a staxy prison game plan. Well, go to combat. Attack you. Kill. <clears throat> Kill you. And the rhinos still got a chance to feed the kids. They still got a chance. Opponent. The rhino is coming. Wow. We could not use most of our mana, and it did not matter. Okay, Siege Rhino proving its worth. <laughs> oh. oh, I missed your sub. I'm so sorry. Orcorn, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, one more chance for, for the sad rhinos. A quick reminder that our sponsor today, did you even, uh, our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And if you need some magic cards, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com. So thank you to Card Kingdom for supporting the show. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen some uh, some cool Magic Aids decks. Although my, so I don't get a chance to watch that many that much content. The main reason I find out about Magic Aids decks is if you play if you if you play a deck that is even anywhere close to a deck that Magic Aid plays, you'll get like five million YouTube comments of people saying. That's a Magic Aids deck. <laughs> so, so that's the main, that's the main way I, the main way I know that there's a, a new Magic Aids deck. <laughs> uh, Magic Aids, someone on, uh, a YouTuber, someone that makes, uh, Magic YouTube videos. Dino Storm. Ooh. That's an interesting take. I haven't, I haven't tried to go more of a, a snapcastery build. I've mostly messed around with more like gruel eight wax style builds. How, uh, how has it worked, Halfling? Have you been able to get down any Thrastus? I mean, if you can get down Thrust on like turn two, it seems very powerful. Savage Summoning's, Savage Summoning's kind of cute to flash in the Thrasta. I remember that being a really expensive card when it was spoiled. When they first spoiled it, it was really expensive, and then it was one of the one of the nosedivers where it just uh, almost immediately crashed. Sigh the Celery Guy. Hey, Seth, I love your content. I've been trying out a Marth EDH deck, but this, uh, but with Zert as a companion, it takes away lots of good token doublers and other good cards, but it's also fun for combo pieces, especially with Cryptic Trilobite. Do you think it's worth it? Ooh. I mean, it sounds fun. I think... Ah. So Commander is weird. Commander being worth it is weird to me. Like, I think... I think both plans are valid in Commander. If you're building a deck for, like, Modern or Legacy or Standard, your goal is probably to win. If you're building a deck for Commander, your goal is to do cool things. So if, you're, if your Zerd is doing cool things and you're having fun with it, then I think it's, then I think it's worth it.
I just think of Commander so differently than I do every other for, uh, format. And Aaron G. Carp, welcome to the fishbowl. Hello to you. Thank you for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's right. That's why I always... That's why I have such a hard time grasping, like, commander tournaments and things like that. I just... It, it just doesn't... My brain doesn't comprehend it because of how I... How I view the commander format. Like, um... Yeah, we'll keep... Because of how I view the commander format, I just view it as, like... Ooh, Soul Scar Mage. All right, all right, all right. Uh, well, tap land. We'll see. Stoneforge for something. Could do something. Siege Rhino could be good if we're alive when we get to Siege Rhino. Opponent. More Soul Scar. Ooh, are we finally going to see Crime Punishment do a thing? Steam Vents. Untapped. Opponent hits us. Sure. Well, we will play a swamp. This might be a crime punishment game. This might be a crime punishment game. Stoneforge. Mystic. Tutoring up. I think batter skull for the life gain. Although the sword's really good here, too. Get the batter skull. Destroy each artifact creature and enchantment with mana value X. Ooh, we got a shot. We got a shot. Wait, playing the castle first would be bad, right? If we play the castle first, then it would come into play tapped. Bonant. Unholy Heat, yeah. Oh, come on. Don't kill us. Play another one drop. Expressive Iteration, sure. Grows the dorks. So this is like, this is like Delver, I think. You should make 5k point redemption for the trumpet sound. <laughs> I, I do like making the trumpet sound. I'm down with that. Opponent hits us down to 15. Oh, Oh, no one expects crime punishment. Oh, it's gonna be a that's gonna be a really good one. Assuming there's no force negation, this is big. Castle Lock Wayne. Green, black, one for the X. We will punish you. Oh. Ho ho Oh, 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 that was so good. That was that was the dream. That is that is as good as it could be. That is as good as it could be. Yeah, and Holy Heat has ended up being pretty good. Hey Seth, uh, will you go to Comic Con with me and cosplay Hans Erickson? I do plan on cosplaying Hans at some point. When is when is Comic Con? Opponent. One drop, lightning bolt, surveils. Mills a land. And Stormwing Entity. All right. Well, opponent's got a fast flying clock. Ugh. Marsh Flats. Crack it. Opponent scryed one to the top. They can draw an extra card. Ooh, what do we do? Yeah, the split card was good. What do we do about this? Archmage Emeritus with Fluster Storm is pretty sweet. The only... Uh, my only concern with Archmage Emeritus is... Two toughness is l not a lot for a four drop that needs to stick on the battlefield. I'm worried about just dying. I would like to kill the creatures, but I don't think we can. So I guess we have to... I guess we gotta play Rhino. Siege Rhino gains some life. Up to 14. Very temporarily, there's a prowess creature on the battlefield. And a expressive iteration. Ooh, on the top of the deck. Expressive iteration has proven itself to be pretty insane. About it. And, well, Lily saves more, that's true, but it also gives our opponent more time. The Siege Rhino Clock is pretty relevant. Opponent finds a Lightning Bolt. If they only had one creature, Liliana would be great, but with two creatures, a little, a little less exciting. Opponent. Yeah, Iteration 
Absurd. Absurd, so good. What's your opinion about grief? In my case, I think a deck with combo turn one, combo turn two, and like five cards. All right, so we take infinite and a half down to three. Hmm, I don't know if it's enough. Go to combat. I don't think it is. Attack you. Down to so close. So, so, so close. Liliana. Take it down. Oh, we were so close. We drew a it, but it's... I think we're just going to be dead. Wow, keeps Dragon's Rage. Interesting. Huh. I guess we just do it right now. Go up to six. Hit you to four. Kill us if you can. Kill us if you can. Sex Islet. Desperation. No bolts. No bolts. No bolts. No bolts. Opponent. Got attack. There's no defense available. Is Rhino going to get there? Rhino Ephemerate? Hits us. Down to three. Sure. And. Come on. Hold. Swift Spear. Okay. So we're going to put our opponent to one with the Rhino Blank. Land tapped. Well, ephemerate. Oh, this is so close. What what noises does a does a rhino make? Drain you. I think we got a Oh, that's excellent. Rhino ephemerate. Rhino ephemerate going to win this game. Get rid of that last card just in case. Ephemerate number 2. Blank it. Rhino blank. Maybe maybe Rhino blank's legit. Maybe Rhino blank's legit. We just haven't been able to do it. That's a Rhino win. Rhino is coming through. Rhino's coming through and trying to get us across the finish line. Rhino Ephemerate was really good there. Well, the kids aren't fed yet. We gotta win the match. We gotta win the match. Oh, is this is this Rhino noises? than I would have thought. I would expect a big, like, like, big, I would expect a big, scary noise, but they're kind of, they sound like, like birds almost. Something, something like that. Uh, we should probably sideboard. Who I'm thinking... I'm thinking about getting a puppy, kinda. If I as as soon as I as soon as I move, assuming I actually do get the house or at least a house, but as soon as I move, I am I'm planning on getting a dog that is at the very top of the list of things that I I wanna do. Still trying to figure out what kind. We might have to have a I think that's a pretty good, a pretty good baby rhino noise. Um, maybe I have to do a poll. Maybe I have to do an against the odds poll on what what type of puppy to get. That seems like a reasonable way to choose to choose a choose a pet. <laughs> we can't cut crime and punishment after that game. Could cut thought sees. Yeah, let's cut thought seas. Go down. Probably a Liliana and
one ephemerate. Getting a rhino would be interesting. I don't know if that's actually... I don't know if that's legal. Although the house... The house that I'm, I'm trying to get now, it actually has... It actually has a decent amount of land with it. So I probably actually could... I probably actually could get a rhino. I don't know if it's legal, but I think it's got enough enough space where I could probably I could probably have a rhino there. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, painful thrust might be literally painful in this matchup. Although we can pitch it to grief, so yeah, I'd probably... I I would probably end up adopting. Although... I'm not sure... I'll have to check. I'm not sure how many options there are for... I'm not sure how many options there are for... Uh, for adopting around where I live. It's one of the downsides of living in... In the middle of nowhere in upstate New York is there's not there's not as much of that cool stuff. Like I I can't even get DoorDash. I'm always so jealous when I'm doing a podcast with Krim and Krim's like, oh, gotta go get my DoorDash. <laughs> Them delivering whatever food I want directly to my door. I'm like, oh, oh I gotta drive I gotta drive twenty minutes to get to a McDonald's. <laughs> so jealous. But I mean, yeah, I mean just like in general though, like I know there's a humane society, but I have no idea how many how many options there are. Well, let's see. Let's grief. We're not gonna cast this painful truce. It's way too way too risky. Get a peek. See what's going on. Maybe we can set up the, the punishment win. My oh, opponent cracks. One of my one of my brothers has Rottweilers, uh, and they're about to have puppies. But I don't know if I. They're super nice dogs, but I don't know if uh, I don't know if I want a Rottweiler because my brother already has them. I kind of feel like I want to get something else. CDT deck. Ooh. That looks solid. I mean, I think Murktide, Murktide Regent, it'll be interesting to see. The problem is the the graveyard hate, but if you can dodge the graveyard hate, it is a really powerful card. All right, well, opponents out of stuff. We will shock ourselves. We will play a Stoneforge Mystic. We will get a... Batter Skull. Pass the turn. Opponent, what do you draw? Best card in the deck, Expressive Iteration. That gives our opponent hopes and dreams. We just lost a German Shepherd who was 13.5. Oh, that's... Yeah, losing losing a, a pet is, is super hard. That's That's too bad. So what kind of breed do I want? Here's my qualifications. I haven't exactly figured it out yet, but I know I want a bigger dog. Uh, and I do not want a super long hair dog, I don't think. Although that's not the end of the, the, end of the world. I, that one I can, I can give on a little bit. Uh, the other thing is I don't want it to be like super... I don't want it to be super high energy. That's one of the reasons that I'm not sure about the... I'm not sure about the uh, Rottweilers. Those are very high energy. I kind of want a lazy dog. I want a dog that'll just, like, chill, hang out, obviously, like, well, you know, go for walks and stuff, whatever, like, but, so it's not, like, no exercise or anything, but a little bit, wow, are we gonna get, wow, this, this crime, this crime, this crime, I mean, I think we gotta go for it, Blooming Marsh, but something that's just kind of a lazy, chill, hang out kind of dog, a big ol' A big old, a big old dog that just wants to hang around. I'd recommend a pit bull, very cuddly and such great companions. Yeah, one of the, I had a friend that had a pit bull that was one of, one of the nicest dogs that I've ever known. Just like the friendliest, nicest dog. The only problem is my, my, uh, 
my mother is like deathly afraid of pit bulls. I don't know why. I think it's I think it's like a media thing. I think there was at one point like tons of I don't know some scare over pit bulls or something. But oh, I don't take this the wrong way, pug fans. But I I really hate pugs. I really very 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 strongly dislike pugs. <laughs> Out of all the dogs that I would possibly get, pugs would be, I think, last on the entire list. Probably by a pretty significant margin, honestly. I'm just, I'm not a, I'm not a pugger. That that goes back to to childhood. Actually, my <laughs> my my grandfather has two dogs. One of them's. One of them's I think like a like a pit bull and it's and it's a uh, super nice. The other one is this little dog. I don't even know what breed it is. And it is the most vicious ankle biter. The mo Oh, we got there. We got there. See Rhino comes through with what a weird league. I mean, I guess this goes back to what they say about Judd that it is That it is a a 50-50 style deck. And that's exactly how this felt. Like, we won some. We lost some. I will say, we did not have any grief starts. I guess we also didn't mulligan super aggressively for it. But we didn't have any of the grief, like, turn, turn one, strip your hand. It was fine, though. We ended up with a 3-1. And most importantly... We saw the power of Siege Rhino to feed the kids. Like, Siege Rhino came through. Siege Rhino, with Ephemerate, was able to get us out of some really sticky spots. So, is Siege Rhino back in modern? Mm, I don't know about that. I don't know about Siege Rhino being fully back. But I do think that it was it was pretty good. It was pretty good. We finished with a 3-2. The kids get a snack. We get a treasure chest. Only one, but sometimes it only takes one. This could be this could be the greatest. Oh, we lost the Siege Rhino. I mean, this could be a Force Negation. It could be a complete set. All right, Siege Rhino, get back in there. All right, one of one. Open the chest. Well, thirty-five play points is fine. Kessig Cage Breakers. Eh, eh, eh. Not not super exciting. Ooh, all right, so what do we learn about sad rhinos? And a couple of things. One is, I feel like, honestly, I feel like, honestly, this deck might have been worse than the other Grief Ephemerate deck we played. We played, like, White Black Grief Ephemerate with Void Walkers and a bunch of discards in Stone Stoneforge. That felt really good. As much as I love Rhino, and I do love Rhino, I'm not sure that adding some ignoble higher since these Rhinos actually makes the deck more competitive. I think that it is really sweet, and I love to see Siege Rhino back. And as we saw, you can post a winning record with the deck, but I would say it's probably a little bit less competitive than uh, than the last version we played. But we did see Siege Rhino Femur be very strong. We saw Stoneforge do Stoneforge things, so... Eh. All right, let's try Let's try deck number two. I don't think we'll get through a full league because today is podcast day. So in about, eh, I don't know, 45 minutes an hour, I got to go upload the podcast. But let's blow some lands. Let's play some monkeys. Deck number two, and we can always finish it uh, in the future. How was Grist? We got to play a deck with more copies of Grist. I don't believe we activated a Grist a single time. I think that Grist is probably okay in the deck. We don't really have any synergies for it. There's no creature tutors or anything. So it's just kind of for value. And I don't think it's bad for value, but we just we just didn't happen to draw it. So Alright. Deck number two. Monkey Ponza. So you know Ponza. Gruel land destruction. We are pillaging. We're blood mooning. We are even trinisphering. We got Karn to get pieces from our sideboard. The big deal with this deck, the big change. Involves Gorilla Shaman, newly legal in modern Gorilla Shaman, the Mox Monkey, one mana, one one, bigger deal, 
pay one in double X to destroy a non-creature artifact with mana value of X, that means for one single mana, it can blow up a zero mana artifact with the help of liquid metal coating. From our main deck or from our sideboard, we can turn our opponent's lands into artifacts and mox monkey them for a single mana. So it's a, it's a land destruction spell, essentially, going alongside Karn, plus it puts a body on the battlefield. So the idea is Blood Moon you, stacks you with Tritosphere, blow up your lands with Mox Monkey, and then eventually Fury, our way to victory, Obsidian Charge Ball, another new addition, the big dragon that blows up the land on the top end. So let's uh, let's try some Monkey Ponza. Let's try a little bit of Monkey Ponza. Chef Stitch, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. I mean, I do love Ponza. Ponza's a really sweet archetype. Ooh, yeah, this should be good against... It should be good against Ursa Saga. Also, right now... <clears throat> How did Dad Thinks end up feeling? Wait, Dad Thinks? Did you get autocorrected, awesome, <laughs> awesome dude? Um... Yeah, Ponza, Ponza's a really fun archetype. I'm curious how good the monkey is going to be. Very curious. Yeah, Ponza's just... It's a, it's, a, it's a really unique archetype. It's cool that it exists in modern. Like, there's not really a Ponza deck in any other format. It's kind of a modern exclusive, I would say. Ooh, Chad, I was going to ask you. How many of you bought the new Secret Lairs? What is, what is your ranking? Of the secret layers. A uh, podcast today, we talk about secret layers. We talk about organized play, prize pool being cut. We talk about historic brawl a little bit. We answer a bunch of fish mail. Did uh, did anyone order secret layers? Praetors? Yeah, that's. I think Praetors is top tier. Maybe I should do a, a tier ranking of the new secret layers. I would say that number one, I mean, Praetors, just value wise, they're absolutely insane. Like, you can't really go wrong with Praetors. Signets both foil. Yeah, the Signets, I think, are really cool. I don't know if I want to pay $6 a piece for Signets, though, but they are old bordered, and I do value old borders quite a bit. Ugh. And they do look really sweet. I think I'm sort of interested in the Wasteland one. Like, it's got a lot of cool old art from Mark Poole. Plus, Wasteland is like a $35 card that I don't actually have any copies of, and I wouldn't mind having some Wastelands. Uh, but we don't really know what the extra card is, right? Or even officially if there is an extra card. I mean, it's ranged from potentially val valuable planeswalker to basic land i think so you just never know so i don't really include unless i know what the card is or know the group of cards it's from like when we knew you're getting a secret layer uh like a single glass planeswalker it's there's some value there no matter what you get but at this point i just i don't know what is the most the most recent one was Basics. Yeah. Is a Jumpstart Foil Basic even worth anything? I wonder if they... I wonder if they gave out all the really good bonuses. Hey, what's up, Dogamith? Good to see ya. I wonder if they used up all the really good bonuses right away. Like, wouldn't that make sense? You start doing... C oh. Oh, we're... We're keeping this. We're keeping this. We just need a Mox Monkey. We're keeping it. It's risky. It is super risky. We could get super punished as a result, but double liquid metal coating. That's a mox monkey away from just Armageddoning our opponent into Oblivion opponent polluted delta. Passing. Well, we'll crack it. Oh, the rhinos were sad because of because of grief. Although we have now we have moved forward to try little monkey Ponza. We finished three and two with Sad Rhinos. Uh, Stompy Grounds. Tapped. Untap. Ooh, Trinisphere 2. Well, Verdant Catacombs. Crack Verdant Catacombs. Did you leave your happy little gathering sealed or opened it? So, are you planning on playing with it? I think that's what it what it comes down to. If you're planning on playing with it, then obviously you gotta open it. And you might as well just go for it. If you're just collecting it, then then I would say just leave it sealed. 
Yeah, the Rhinos, the Rhinos got the 3-2. Blinking Rhino with Ephemerate ended up pulling it out in the end. Oh, boy. Blue-Black Control, maybe? Well, pass the turd. Come on. Artifact. Ooh, Karn. Um, well, let's play Liquid Metal Coating. Windswept Teeth. Ooh, if we ever find the monkey, our opponent's mana is going to be in for it. Opponent Ops. Or if we ever get to resolve anything. <laughs> Just resolving something, like this card, would also be very good. Avoted Adepts. Land. Passing. Well, crack Windswept Teeth. Get a Stomping Grounds tapped. Untapped. Shatter Skull smashing. Well, make him counter it. Turn his fear. All right, counter one. Tap land. We're missing the monkey. Doesn't Karn turn liquid metal coating into a uh, port? Yeah, Karn is, uh, is great with liquid metal coating. It actually can just eat lands too with a plus one, but. Uh, so it's even better than a port. The problem is finding a way to resolve it. We'd really like to draw the monkey, and then we play two spells in a turn and maybe resolve one. Or instant speed, obsidian charge maw. I mean, we gotta just cast it. I don't think there's any any other option. Wooded foothills, forest. Cast a charge maw. See if our opponent's got counter number two. I'll say this again, my Pharaoh Stargazing Foils are the worst curled cards I've ever seen. Alright, more counter spells. We need the monkey. Where's the monkey? Oh, uh, we we have switched to some monkey, monkey ponza. But uh it was Siege Rhino with grief. That was the the sad part about it. Oh. Well, they could have force negation still. Monkey wins us the game. If we just draw the monkey, we win. We just eat all their lands and we win. I don't think our opponent can get out of it. We're going to play the Karn if we don't draw it, but... Oh, come on, monkey. Come on, monkey. Come on, monkey. Stomping grounds. That's not a monkey. Um, well... Play a uh, Karn. Make him force in the... Ooh, no force negation. Okay. Well. That's interesting. That might win us the game, too. Opponent was desperate to find land number four, but... Yeah. Well, no monkey yet, but lands are going away. Eat the land. Tap land. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. Double liquid metal coating seems pretty good here. Opponent. Untaps. Uh, why don't you turn into an artifact? <laughs> oh, that feels so good. Opponent. So... Turns into an artifact. This shuts down activator abilities. Cannot be activated. The new... Have I tried Vadrock Ponza? Uh, have we tried Vadrock Ponza? I don't think we have in modern, at least. I kind of feel like we might have played it in historic at one point. But I'm pretty sure we haven't actually played it in, mo uh, in modern. There's a lot of options in, in modern. We've definitely played, like, Goblin Dark Dweller. But Vadrock would be would be sweet. It is a cool way to keep flashing stuff back. Well, we will target your land. Opponent's going to float mana. Take up Karn, eat your land. Opponent runs out another Snapcaster. Awkward. Uh oh. Opponent ops. To the bottom. Loses a land. Whoa. Hello? Wow, that was. That was super weird. Am I still here? Wow, that... Okay. 
Wow, everything just went black. All my my power and everything, my computers and lights and everything shut down. And then it came back on like five seconds later. And I assume that uh I assume that the stream would have died, but apparently not. The stream is the stream is still going. Yeah, that was that was really, really strange. Okay, we're good. We're good. I thought we were uh <laughs> I thought we were getting wrecked by electricity failing, but apparently not. It blinked for a second? Yeah, it definitely blinked for me. Opponent untaps. Well, coding your land. And the stream is so powerful. It has a it has a life of its own now. It has a mind of its own. You don't even need you don't even need electricity. The stream just keeps going. You can't shut it down no matter what. <laughs> even if you want to, you can't stop it. Opponent <laughs> hits us. Karn goes down to one. Passes. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Well, we will target your land. Karn your land. Captain Norvgood, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, uh, so we're going to lose the Karn. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I think we cast it. The other option is blow up our opponent's last land with a braid, which might actually be better, but this is fine. Turn Timber Symbiosis. Bone could have a counter. That, yep, there's a force negation. All right. I'll pass the turn. We have our opponent with almost no mana, but... Awkwardly, I we're not really winning, because we haven't run anything else. <laughs> They're going to kill the Karn, and I actually don't know if we... I actually don't know if we win from here. Strangely, Pona gets and hits us. Who whiffs super hard on their TSR box? Yeah, TSR... Wow, another land... TSR can definitely be a bit, a little bit hit or miss. Well, pass the turn. Are we going to have our opponent in zero lands and lose? We really need a Pyromancer. Pyromancer to refuel is what we need more than anything. Well, blow up your last land. No mana. No mana! Oh, if we lose this, I'm going to be so sad. How bad was the... How bad was the TSR box for you? Wow, opponent forgot to attack. I'll crack windswept teeth. Stomping grounds tap. 